with me posting some pictures and videos here and there of some activities I've done with the kiddos uh, using this uh, virtual screen. Some of you have asked um, how I've been able to achieve that. And so I decided to make a how-to video on how to basically uh, achieve this type of height and this type of setup, uh, basically at home or anywhere you want to install something similar. Uh, basically, I'm using the Epson uh, right link type projector. It's a 455WI. I've actually had it for quite some time. Never really had a use for it. And then uh, kiddos came around, and uh, it's actually the neatest thing ever because they get to basically do a lot of different activities. Uh, with it. Um, I do know, and actually, recently I found out that these were used uh, a lot in school. Uh, I had no idea they used this type of stuff in school, so um, there seems to be, they seem to be readily available pretty much anywhere. You can find them on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or whatnot or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to show basically some of the dimensions that I did. The, uh, the bottom of the bracket itself uh, is at It's at around 69 inches, uh, and then the actual uh, frame for the overall width of the projector screen here is 78 by 48. Uh, and the type of whiteboard I'm using back here is basically uh, you can use a wall if you want to, but uh, I went and got this uh, whiteboard, it's basically a dry erase board, uh, or I believe that you can, I think the application is for like kitchen, kitchen walls and stuff like that. But, uh, I added trimming to it. Uh, the whiteboard itself was probably like $7 for the entire sheet. Uh, the trim pieces were probably like less than $20 and they were pre-colored uh, pre already, so that was a pretty neat thing. So the bottom of the screen itself sits at around three and a half inches. Uh, and because it is a short throw projector, uh, you can literally stand, you know, almost this close to it and it really won't block the view at all. So the kids, uh, basically, once they're uh, drawing or doing, doing different activities on it, they, you can hardly uh, see where they're actually blocking the screen. And so I wanted to go over some kind of cool things that you can kind of do with it using the uh, desktop feature. Uh, I use, uh, with the kids, I use a highlighter version of the uh, interactive software that this uh, projector came with. And basically you're able to use it just for coloring on the canvas or paper or whatever. Uh, you choose different colors. Uh, the daughter is actually getting uh, really familiar with using all the controls. Uh, another cool thing is if you don't want to actually uh, uh, right on the actual desktop per se, uh, you can always just do the whole entire screen. Uh, let me get something a little thicker. And you were able to go ahead and uh, not only do that, but grab different shapes and whatnot. Um, the kids can practice on their shapes. Uh, the daughter actually every now and then she'll play some school games that involve uh, different shapes or moving a couple of uh, animals to a different spot so she's able to use the interactive pen and move from one place to the other and she gets a big kick out of that. Uh, and basically that's pretty much it. Um, you know, not only are you able to uh, you know, watch videos on it, watch uh, any kind of Netflix uh, Disney or anything related. I have it cooked up to a PC, so that is actually why I'm able to do pretty much anything more in it. Uh, the wife actually comes over here and I mean, she uses it for um, doing exercise videos, so she likes it because it's like basically at her kind of height level kind of thing. She doesn't have to look up or um, she's got plenty of room to kind of move around and doesn't block her, like a typical projector would. Uh, so that's just a couple of examples. Uh, towards the end of the video, I'll put some more examples of what you can actually Thank you.